Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 28th. Today we're going to take a look at the weather across Pacific Northwest. We'll take a look at the extended as well as some ensemble runs. And we'll watch this system that comes in Sunday night and bring some lingering showers Monday, Tuesday with a cooler upper level air mass getting over the region here. And we'll take a brief look at the East Coast storm coming up. And then we'll look at our extended forecast as well. Checking out the visible satellite here. You can already see the fog is burning off pretty well across most of the areas of western Washington and Oregon, except for some areas of the southern Willamette Valley. The coast of Oregon and Washington are pretty good again. There's going to be some high clouds starting to move in from the next system, as you can see offshore here. This is our system coming in for Sunday. We're going to get a frontal system to bring at least some precipitation, and we'll clear up some of this air stagnation issues for portions of Washington and Oregon. And you can see eastern Washington mainly still socked in under that inversion there. You can see that uh, fog made it pretty far up into the eastern slopes of the Cascades. Again, you can see some of the lower valleys here through Idaho and eastern Oregon, Montana. And there's some high clouds over the top of British Columbia today, so you can't see those uh, that lower level fog. And it's probably not as thick as it was the past couple of days because of those clouds, although it still may be there. And you can see some of the areas of the higher terrain are still sunny and you can see the snow showing up nicely, especially down through Oregon. Check that out. Nice and nice and clear down there and all the way down through California. So jumping right into it here, everybody's talking about this big East Coast storm and they are they have the alerts up. There's blizzard warnings for portions of Long Island down the East Coast, Atlantic City, Georgetown. And if we look up towards Boston, just a large area of blizzard warnings out there. This is going to be a pretty significant snowfall event, potentially historic. And they've got the winter storm warnings out for the remainder of areas. A few winter weather advisories on the further uh, west portions of the where the storm is expected to impact. And you can see they have all kinds of issues going on blizzard conditions gusts as high as 50 miles per hour 8 to 15 inches of snow coastal counties in new jersey and the delaware beaches tonight and saturday so if you have interest out there or you're thinking about heading out there you might uh you know check on your flight you might be delayed you might have a hard time getting back and look at some of these impacts extreme so and you can see here they have the snow forecast there for the coastline look at that foot to a foot and a half there percent chance of six inches or more snow very high and of course there's coastal flooding and issues wind chill and low temperatures as well too especially in the wake of this storm it's going to get pretty cold all the way out to the coast so checking out the storm here as you see it here we are now and it could put this into motion you can see that storm that draws the cold air out to the coast but it's going to be throwing pretty good moisture back over the top there's going to be some really heavy bands of snowfall with this event I heard three to four inches per hour are possible in some areas. And look at the wake of this storm. How this Arctic air just gets all the way out to the coastline. Check out these teens and single digits not that far from the East Coast. So potentially historic snowfall event. You know, this is going to affect millions of people out there. You're probably going to hear a lot about it tonight. And you'll see a lot of news information on that going into tomorrow. Here is the snowfall accumulation of the gfs remember yesterday that they had much less snow here and they had it more for just the cape cod area now you can see it's extended inland a bit more and heavier totals looking at the nam 3km here the high resolution model you can see it paints a pretty good swath of snowfall all the way across coastal areas of virginia all the way up through cape cod boston massachusetts all the way up to the northeast of the u.s a very impressive storm. Look at some of these snowfall totals. Over two feet expected some places in Massachusetts there. So looking back at the more general pattern of weather here for us, you can see our system here bringing a weak front through the Pacific Northwest starting Saturday night into Sunday. You can see some decent precipitation amounts in the mountains, but a lot of the lowland Seattle area is going to be um, rain shadowed by the Olympics in this event and you can see the precip getting all the way down toward the Willamette Valley and the Oregon coast not much gets into eastern Washington some makes it into the coastal range of the Rockies there Idaho and Montana probably be mostly snow at elevation there and you'll see the Arctic high kind of slide down maintain itself east of the Rockies for the most part we got a bit of this Arctic air that comes out that I'll show you here on a map in a bit and that kind of moves down over us it's modified a bit once it gets over the water so we just got a little taste of this Arctic air mass that's going to churn down east of the Rockies here. And then you can see the residual flow out of the northwest 
on into early next week with light precipitation amounts. We'll take a look at that in some detail here too. And looking at the GFS here. So here is the frontal system going through on Sunday. Not a particularly strong front. Mountain snows. And you can see Monday night, a uh, little bit of convergent zone activity showing up here on the GFS. Also had that on Sunday night there as well, right here. And on into Tuesday even too, they still have, you know, there's going to be some pretty cold air a lot. There could be snowflakes down pretty low. Not expecting any kind of widespread snow, of course. And you know, no frozen sidewalks this time. And as we go, this is the European now looking at that frontal system coming in on Saturday night reaches the coast. And you can see the mountain snows ongoing. Frontal system moves through the area Sunday afternoon. You can see some convergence act zone activity in the immediate post-frontal environment there. And then on into Monday, you still see convergence zone activity going on here. Even paints a little bit of snowfall down close to sea level. But of course, I'm not going to expect any accumulations with that. Nothing significant anyway. Maybe a dusting. But it is a chilly air mass aloft. And here we go into this is as far as the 060 European goes. And you can still see Monday some convergence on activity across the sound. It doesn't look as much as a progressive push down the Puget Sound with the initial convergence zone. But then with maybe with some northwesterlies that come down around Vancouver Island, eventually that flow will turn northerly down through the Puget Sound. So we'll have a chance to look at that in the upcoming uh, upcoming tomorrow. So here's some of the winds. You can see how they're pretty light. And you see the frontal system offshore here starting to approach, bringing these southerly winds much stronger. And those will finally clear out the air, mainly Saturday night and into Sunday. You can see we get some pretty good southerly flow through the Puget Sound along the coastlines. They didn't really need any scouring of their Arctic air there, though. Uh, sorry, I mean the, the uh, air stagnation. And you see the frontal system pass through here Sunday afternoon. And you'll notice the northwesterly flow coming behind that. And down the Strait of Juan de Fuca and the Chehalis Gap, so convergence zone there probably Sunday afternoon and the, right after the front moves through. And then we go into Monday, and there's still a hint of convergence zone activity going on through the Puget Sound area there. And on into Tuesday, that should continue as we're in northwest flow, light precipitation mounts, but chilly air aloft. So some of those showers could have some snowflakes mixed in in the lower elevations, but of course, no big snowfall accumulations expected. So here's kind of highlighting how much the air mass is going to change here. You can see this is at 5,000 feet. You know, this is why we have the inversion. There's warmer air aloft here. And as you can see, the system approach from the northwest there. Here goes that frontal system. Then the air in the wake of it is pretty chilly. Um, negative six values are about where we cut off lowland snow potential. But again, it's going to be a, <clears throat> it's not, it's going to be above freezing at the surface. So there's not going to be any snowfall accumulation expected. Precipitation totals, this is the last um, European run here. You can see that kind of move in there. You notice how the, the European actually has decent precipitation amounts for the Seattle area. The GFS has much less, so it's much more of a rain-shadowed situation for the Seattle area. And you can see some pretty good precipitation amounts, mainly in the form of snow, of course, for the elevations of the Cascades. Uh, Snoqualmie Pass north, you can see the Olympics get a pretty good shot of precipitation here, but... It might be the only good precipitation chances we get here for the next couple weeks. We look to be going back into a ridgy position here. So here's the GFS. I'll put this into motion here. And you can see, look at how shadow, Seattle's rain shadowed there. A lot of mountain precip. And really the lowlands of the Puget Sound are pretty shadowed according to the GFS. So the European not showing that so much. So we'll see how that works out. And snowfall potential, of course, mainly for the mountains. This is the European, but notice this little convergence zone activity drops a little bit of snowfall down north of Everett there. So you might see some snowfall mixed in with some of that activity on Monday during the convergence zone as it comes through there. And some pretty good totals here in the mountains. You know, we need it. It's been a bit since they've gotten any decent snowfall. And the sun takes a toll. It doesn't necessarily melt the snowpack so much as it compress the snowpack for the Cascades. So taking a wider angle look at what's going on here, this is um, as of last night here. You can see this bit of cold air breaks off this Arctic lobe here. This is showing the, the colder Arctic air. You can see this breaks off here and kind of goes over the ocean. You see it modify a bit and it gets down towards us. That's what's going to bring our frontal system and that'll bring the cooler air behind it. But you can see for the most part that Arctic air stays east of the Rockies. We don't really get involved in that too much. We just missed. That's what we had been talking about for a while, that potential for some of that Arctic air getting out over the region. And this looks like a near 
you know, a near hit, and that Arctic air spreads down over into the eastern portions of the country. And you can see we miss out a bit. And then the ridging returns in the extended, according to the European. Then maybe some systems start to break down going into mid-February. We'll, we'll have to see how that goes. So again, check out all the watches, warnings, and advisories, blizzard warnings, winter storm warnings, winter storm advisories, all kinds. So if you have any interest out there on the East Coast, heads up. And you can see our air stagnation advisories, of course, here, and a few wind advisories and warnings elsewhere across the country. So Great Falls, high wind warning through Friday afternoon. Just check that out if you guys are traveling eastbound. You know, Cut Bank. I know there's some people that follow the channel in Montana off to the uh, west of Great Falls there. Gust to 60 miles per hour. And watch on the immediate slopes for 80 mile per hour gust possible. Now looking on into the extended a bit here. Here is last night's European run. This is just looking at the overall, you know, this is the Northern Hemisphere again. Here's the North Pole. Here's Washington, Oregon, California. Here's Alaska. And you can see our bit of our polar lobe that breaks off there that's going to come down towards us, bringing that frontal system Sunday into Monday and the cooler air behind it, while most of the Arctic air is going to miss us to the east. The ridging is just a bit too close. Had it set up a, you know, a few hundred miles further east, we'd be talking about a much more dynamic system for the Pacific Northwest. But we're paying for our treat in December, apparently. We're going through our, our stale period. So you can see that ridge kind of hang out for a while there on into next week. And then a weak system the European is introducing uh, on into early the following Monday. And the ridge builds back again. So it's just a very persistent ridge on top of us there. But these things, you know, we're, we're in early. We're going to be in early February at that point, and things can change quickly. This ridge could easily take a different position. We can get some more development on the backside of it, or maybe it will flatten out more and we'll get uh, systems coming over the top of it. So things can change quickly, so we'll stay tuned. And here's looking at the GFS's version of it. You can see the frontal system sliding down here, and you can see that system has been trending further east as we've been going along here, and it's... it's uh, its impacts are going to be felt definitely on the east side of the Rockies much more as this Arctic air mass stays on the east side. And we just kind of get this mundane Pacific high. We got a little bit of Arctic air, as we talked about, coming down out of the northwest flow, but not a dynamic system for us. And then you can see next week a system slides north of us. More of an Arctic high builds on the GFS here. This would be more of an interesting scenario because this Arctic high is further west into British Columbia and this would affect us more and bring us colder but I have very little confidence in the GFS at this point this is way out there and the GFS has been teasing these kind of scenarios off and on during the winter it was actually fairly correct during the December period but it was pushing those you know that potential back it was kicking the can down the road a bit until it actually happened so we need a lot you need a lot more before you can convince me of any kind of cold air getting into the Pacific Northwest on the GFS so here is the, the European here showing through mid-February for Seattle. Check this out. So we get this frontal system here, and we bring some precip into the region. And look at the, you know, the control run only has about an inch of rain through February 12th. And the, the mean only has, you know, just about an inch and a half. So very relatively dry for this time of year. And, you know, we may pay for that later. You know, we might be end, end up getting a very active end of February or perhaps March. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. But, you know, these these patterns don't tend to hang out long for the Pacific Northwest. So we'll see what's coming down the road. And things can change quickly. The GFS here, too, which had the much more shadowed system here on Sunday and Monday. <clears throat> and you can see out here the control has less than an inch. And all the way, the, well, the control had less than a half an inch, actually. The mean has less than an inch as we go on into early February. So looking at a pretty dry period coming up here. So crossing my fingers, hope we get some kind of change, but it looks pretty mundane for now. So yeah, now tomorrow I'll talk, or tomorrow or the next day, I will talk a little bit about the Madden-Julian oscillation and El Nino and La Nina and the ENSO correlation. And I'll take a brief look at that and I'll kind of try to explain things. I've been getting some questions about that, both in private messages and some of the comments. So I'll go over that a little bit here in the next day or two, and I'll probably do a live briefing. 
If there's a good convergence zone set up, I'll do a briefing on Sunday night or Monday, Tuesday afternoon. I'll go out and do a live stream and chase the event and answer some questions then. But until then, I will talk to you guys tomorrow in tomorrow's briefing. Thanks.